We have some interesting challenges ahead of us. We have the challenge of space. Space agencies, scientists and the private sector. All of these people today are interested in space exploration. If we get it wrong in space, that has massive implications for us. If we continue to move on a positive path in the way we utilise space, then more and more and more people will benefit. My name is Stephen Freeland. I am appointed by the United Nations to chair the 120 countries in what's known as the United Nations Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space. My name is Athena Kustenis, Director of Research on Planetary Sciences. My name is Mark Beer. I'm involved in the Asgardia, the nation built on a satellite. Every day of your life, you will be utilising space technology 10, 20, 30 times a day. Uh, and it's not just the GPS in your phone, it's uh, financial transactions, it's weather forecasting, it's satellite television, it's communications, it's agricultural management, it's disaster management, it's transportation. Literally, space is part of the critical infrastructure of every country in the world and every person on the planet is touched by space. There's so many aspects to space and we need to have a set of rules that allow for us to utilise space in the most appropriate, sustainable and hopefully peaceful ways. The last time all of the countries of the world came together to set out a law on space wasn't last year, it wasn't 50 years ago. It was in 1967. Since 1967, the countries of the world have not been able to agree collectively on any law that governs space. The Outer Space Treaty was signed in 67, and today it's ratified by 112 nations. It's very important because it is not legally binding, but it does bring attention to people that they should be mindful not to go to places and do whatever they like. You cannot go anywhere you like and just transform the place or just contaminate the place or just put a flag there or something. Because there's much more excitement now and much more development of technology about not claiming areas and owning areas, but extracting resources. Again, I use that expression that I don't like, mining the moon, right? We need to find ways of building on the existing principles, but we need quite clearly to build upon that for the specific ideas, you know, about what exploitation might mean, what that might look like, how countries are to cooperate together. That's what we're trying to do through this multilateral process. Since 1956 to about today in 2022, there's been only 16,000 satellites launched and put in, in space. The next 10 years have at least half a million satellites in applications to put those in space. We're looking at a totally transformative way in which we're going to deal with space. And it comes back to that question. Should any individual country have the right to put as many as they want, wherever they want? Is the debris that that will create, the chaos that that will create in the best interest of the world? I do not believe in space going out there and being permanently in competition. I know some countries are in competition. Space treaties are there to ensure that competition doesn't forbid collaboration, doesn't forbid cooperation. So space treaties are very important, but the most important thing is scientists, private sector, space agencies, engineers coming together. Rulemaking based on consensus is going to be the way that we'll deal with these questions raised about the complexity of low Earth orbit and beyond as we start to look at communities on uh, satellites, you know, hotels on satellites, hotels on the moon. I believe we will have the opportunity to, to visit the moon within 50 years and spend time there. I believe there'll be people that, that spend a lot of time there um, and probably within 100 years we'll be on Mars. But to survive, that colony is going to have to come together around utilitarian principles, around utilitarian norms, what's best for the greater good. 
The ideal settlement in space would be, let's say, 20 people from 20 different countries, all living and working together. In the absence of anything else, at least those 20 people would be subject to 20 different laws, right? Because each of them is subject to their own national law. And clearly, that's a system that does not work because in any settlement in a hazardous environment like space, all the people living together are totally reliant on each other. And therefore it's important that we all are subject as individuals to a common set of rules. Should there be a single legal system? Should we develop a new legal system? What will the human rights that apply? What rules will apply? What ethical codes, whose ethical codes, whose morals will apply? These are some of the very critical issues that we're considering in the Ministry of Justice in Asgardia, but that academics around the world are considering, and there isn't a right answer. We always have to sit back and remember that space is about humanity. So that will require a change of thinking amongst the actors, and that's difficult. Change is very difficult. But if we are to maximise the benefits of space so that we can all benefit, then we need to at least begin to think about what is appropriate, what is not appropriate, and how do we move forward collectively and collaboratively.